The other thing is about risk reduction, operational and financial. And, and in this one, yeah, I, I was talking earlier about development program execution. So part of that mix change, C-17 is done. The Air Force and the foreign countries bought their last C-17 last year. The last one's been left the company. We spent about three billion a year in the supply chain to produce those C-17s. That's a lot of spin came off the books when that happened. When that spin comes off the books, that's a lot of suppliers with whom we had incredible buying power. We just have a lot less now. Um, F-18, F-15 here in St. Louis, the Apache helicopter in Mesa, the Chinook, the V-22 in Philadelphia. Helicopter business is going gangbusters because it's one of those products that's bought still by, in large quantity by our U.S. forces and by international. Our space business is growing, our satellite business is growing, so that mix is changing. But a lot of this is in development, so for us in defense, it can take five years, ten years from an airplane, from the time it starts, a new product starts in development, especially an airplane, to the time it really starts to become operational out there in the field. Right now, we just have a coincidence of tanker, a, a satellite program, a couple other programs, all in development at the same time. And so, um, so when they're in development, there's a lot of work and not as much revenue. There's a lot of supply chain at, at the same time. So, so it's, just a, it's just a period right now where you know, we've really got to get these done well, done quickly, and get them into the marketplace. Those of you, any of you followed 787 four or five years ago, we were two years late to the market on 787 because of a lot of supply chain problems. I'll call them supply chain problems. Yeah, there were supplier problems in there, but there was also Boeing problems in there as well. So, it, so to be honest, we should call it supply chain, of which we're all partners. We don't want that to happen again during this period. That's one of the biggest risks we, we face from both an operational and financial point of view, is getting those development programs done and done on time. When most of the hard development's actually taking place in a supplier's facility. They're the ones figuring out the radar, the propulsion engine for the rocket ship, you know, things like that. So it's, we know it's a competitive discriminator. Companies in our industry, they live or die by their supply chain, the performance of it, the affordability of it, the quality of it. And, and so um, we, we have to be there and, and be there in a, in a, in a better, better you know, way than we have been in the past. Um, so, so we said, we got to have a different approach to this because we were just fragmenting ourselves all over the place. We said, okay, if we're going to be strategic, if we're going to be strategic value of the corporation or get them to see the value, you know, what we have to do is go from a cost center to value creator. So there was this idea that said a couple of things. Top line growth, supply chain in our business is instrumental to top line growth. You will win or lose the business. But 65% of your cost and you're in a cost shootout with a competitor or in your supply chain, you're going to win or lose largely on supply chain. So how do we make sure we're doing longer term category strategies? Well, let's just say, say landing gear. Every airplane has them because you want to be able to land and take off again. Um, we buy them differently on every airplane. We buy them from different companies. We buy them in different ways. Sometimes the, we ask the supplier to design it. Sometimes we design it. Somebody came to me once and said, what's our strategy for landing gear? I said, apparently you get a pick. I don't know. You know, everybody does their own thing. And so what we said, we've got to stop that. You know, landing gear is one, probably the third or fourth most expensive item in the airplane. We've got to say, why are we letting that just be a free-for-all? Shouldn't we be saying there's three or four major companies, they're all big, um, actually, it's almost a duopoly between two, and they behave just like, trust me, we know about duopolies with Airbus, they behave that way. It's, it's hard to really get a good price competition going. Could we, could we get a third place or a fourth place player, move them up a little bit, now we got three in the game. With three, you're always going to have better competition than just with two. And we can mix it up a little bit. Maybe, that, maybe by introducing a third and fourth player, we get more innovation, we get some investment, we get some excitement. We get, certainly get a little price you know, going on. So we introduced another company, Huru DevTech, a smaller company. They make landing gear, just not on the scale of UTC or a Messier Dowdy. Put them in the game on the 777X. So now we've introduced competition by thinking, not just, oh my gosh, I've got to have a landing gear for this airplane. It's like, from a category point of view, what could we do to stimulate industry in the direction we want? Because once you, once you pick that company for that landing gear on the airplane, They've got a franchise for the next 50 years. You'll never get another company on that airplane because it's too expensive, the switching costs are too high, qualification, certification, that sort of thing, the spare parts channel, everything. So, you know, so that's what we're trying to do. Let's, instead of driving right at the edge of our f headlights, let's look a little further bit down the road. Let's see how we can start to orchestrate solutions in the supply chains instead of just kind of, like I said, negotiate right in front of our face.